Welcome back. We are talking about running Spark in the cloud. And in this video, we will finally set up a cluster in Google Cloud Platform. In Google Cloud, they have a service called DataProts or DataProc, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's short for data processing. That's why DataProts probably makes more sense. I don't know. If somebody knows how to pronounce it correctly, let me know. I'll go with DataProts. So in this video, we will see how to create a cluster in Google Cloud Platform. And then we will see how to run a Spark job that we created previously with data prods and then we will see how to do something similar to spark submit but using cloud sdk to submit a job to data prods so let us start with going to google cloud platform and then here we will need to find data prods so i do not have any clusters here and by the way when you run it for the first time it will ask you to enable this api i have already done this i have already run something on data prods but you will need to enable this just click on one button and then it works after that so now after doing this click on create cluster and now we need to create a cluster i'll call it i don't know data talks club cluster or data engineering zoom camp cluster and then for the region i will go to the same region where the bucket is so the bucket is in europa 6 in zurich so i'll go with europa 6 and zone i don't think it matters so then cluster type in practice you would go with standard so in standard you will have one master node and then multiple workers for now we're just experimenting we can just go with single node because we don't have very large data set that we need to process so we can just go with single node yeah, so here at the end, we need to specify additional components. I will select Jupyter Notebook, even though we right now we will not use any of this, but usually having Jupyter Notebook is useful. If you want to use Jupyter on the cluster for doing some experiments, I will not show you how exactly you can use Jupyter with data prods, but I think you will find a lot of materials. And other thing I will tick here is Docker. So this is something I wanted to cover in the next section, how we can use Docker with Spark. Right now for this video, we will not use Docker. For the next video, we will also not use Docker, but eventually we might need it so I select this now we can click create we can also look at other things like what kind of nodes we have there so this is for the worker we can just go with the default ones so yeah so we can just click create and now it creates the cluster so it will take some time it will also create a virtual machine i think if we go now to virtual machine instances so i have this virtual machine that i use now for writing things but if i refresh we probably will see a virtual machine from the cluster yeah so it's called the zoom cluster m yeah it should be master we don't need to connect to it even though we can for example if we want to connect to master ui and see all these things we will not do it now we'll just need to wait till it finishes setting this thing up Okay, I see that it finished, it's running, and now we can try to submit a job there. Remember a few videos ago, saw how to connect to Google Cloud Storage using this thing here. For data prods, we will not need to do this because data prods is already configured to be able to access Google Storage, Google Cloud Storage. So we can forget about this. So this is only needed if you're running it from a virtual machine without prior configuration or from your local environment without any prior configuration. So we can get about this for now and what we will do is we click on this cluster and in this cluster we have this thing submit a job so let me do this and then uh, here in the job type i select PySpark, and now we need to specify the main python file what we need to do in order to run our file is to upload it somewhere and we can simply use the bucket we already created this one ddc data lake uh, de zoom camp and y taxi so we can just create a folder here that we will call code and just upload the file there. Let me go to my terminal. So I have this code here. This is Park SQL. So this is the thing we created recently. Uh, remember that we removed master here. So this is important here. We do not want to specify master when we submit to data prods because we want to make sure that it uses the configuration from data prods in order to correctly assign the master. So we want to upload this file to our bucket. I'll use gsutil uh, cp and then this file and then we want to save it to this bucket. So the location is gs and then code and then... So in practice you would probably have a separate bucket just for the code but we can put the data and the code in the same bucket for simplicity. We uploaded this. Now I simply copy this and paste it here. 
this is the main Python file. We do not have any dependencies, so here we don't need to specify any additional Python files. We do not need to specify any extra jar files but we need to specify arguments here and the arguments we have are here so remember when we did spark submit we needed to configure it so we needed to say where the data is coming from and where we need to write it so in this configuration the data is written locally we need to change it a little bit and we need to replace this data with the bucket name so i will take this thing and now replace data with this green data set that we use for input leaves in this location yellow in this location and we want the results to be written in this location i'll copy this thing and now paste here arguments so this is the first argument then this is the second argument so I just put the thing here and click enter and then this is the last argument so this is how we parameterize the job now we can just submit and see what happens so the job is starting, we have some information about the job. So let's see what's happening. So there is some output that is not very useful for us, I guess. Well, at least we see that it submitted something. Yeah, let's just wait. So it seems it finished. It says successfully repaired. I don't know why it's repaired. Probably it meant that it created this directory. And then it stopped. There's probably an easy way to connect to Spark Master and see it from there. I don't know how to, to do this easily, but we see that the job finished. Probably the easiest way is to just connect to the master node that we have here using this external IP, maybe SSH to this, the port forwarding and connect to master or expose the port and connect. But anyways, it finished, so let's check the results. I want to refresh it. And I see that we have folder code. This is where we uploaded the file. I see this report 2021, which is the result. So now we successfully submitted our job to cluster we created on Google Cloud Platform and it computed something and it saved the result to this location. So we did it through web interface, not convenient. We wouldn't do this from Airflow, for example, or I don't know, just from terminal. So you wouldn't do it through the web UI. That's why there is a different way of doing this and you can do it through Google SDK. Yeah, so here we see the information about the job we submitted, region, cluster, and so on, Python file and arguments, right? And we see this thing, equivalent rest. So I will copy this thing. There are three ways of submitting a job to Dataprods cluster. First is through Web UI. The second one is through Google Cloud SDK. And the third one using this REST API. I have never used REST API. I do not know how to use it, but we have some important information here. Like we will need cluster name here and then we will need python file and then arguments to learn how to do this with google cloud sdk i go to this url i found this by looking up how to submit a job to data proc with google cloud sdk yeah so this is the example with google cloud this gcloud sdk rest api this web ui so we'll use this one gcloud so let me copy this and I will do this first in Visual Studio Code and then put this to our virtual machine and execute it. So we do Google Cloud Data Pros Jobs Submit and then job command here should be PySpark. Then cluster is this one, the Zoom Camp cluster. The region, let me check. So region is Europe West 6. And then other data procs flags. I don't know what these flags are. And now we need to specify the application of the script. The script lives here. And now we need to have two minuses to say that now we finished configuring the Spark submit part, but now we can pass the parameters to the actual job. Everything after this thing will be parameters to the job. So I'm just going to copy this thing here and put it here. So this is this part. So cluster region, then file, and then the arguments. Let me copy this and execute it from the terminal. When I do this, we see that permission denied, not authorized to request the resource. And the reason for that is I used the same service account that we used for setting up Terraform, for doing pretty much everything we used throughout the course. And this service account does not have permissions to submit jobs to data prods. So we need to change that. For that, we go to IM, IM and admin. 
and the role we have here well in principle you should of course have separate roles one role you would have for terraform with a lot of permissions and then for your airflow workers you would have a different role that would have permissions to submit a job to data prods or access google cloud storage or things like this but to keep things simpler we will just use the same service account and i will just add an extra role that should be data prods admin so this role has a lot of permissions we probably only need submit permission but we will just keep things simpler and go with administrator role now policy is updated so we can re-execute it so now it goes through you see that the job is submitted and now we're waiting for job output so it shows us the same thing as we saw in the web interface but now we see this in the terminal to make things interesting we should have actually changed it a little bit we can execute this for 2020 I think it finished now. Just some extra output. Now let me run it one more time, but with a different argument. So now we will do the same thing, but for 2020. If we use Airflow, so for example, the simplest thing we can do is just, uh, you know, have bash operator that is doing exactly that. This is the simplest possible way of implementing this. There is also Spark submit operator, and then you can technically use Spark submit to submit to Spark master. Yeah, you know, this way it's just a little bit simpler. It finished so let's check if the results are there so i go to the bucket probably should have created a better structure instead of report 2020 21 just have a folder report it doesn't matter at all so we see that it created both so we have report for both years that our spark job just created in this folder so we see that it works so this is how we use data prod spark cluster for processing jobs okay now you know how to get data from google cloud storage process it and save it to google cloud storage again but for your projects you probably are more interested in uh, putting data to a data warehouse not to google cloud storage because you want to let's say build a dashboard visualize this data one thing you can do is now you have data in google cloud storage then you can create an external table and then copy this to a normal bigquery table but there is an easier way to do this you can use spark to write directly to big table and in the next video i will show you how to do that